All right, uh, I want to talk about Hall effect sensors. The Hall effect, which is a, a way to uh, measure magnetism. And uh, I mentioned it once before, uh, I have this uh, uh, clip-on uh, ammeter, and it uses two Hall effect sensors in it to detect, uh, to detect current. It measures the, uh, the magnetic field and, and uh, uh, tells you what that is. Um, so there are other types of Hall effect sensors, though. A lot of Hall effect sensors will give you, uh, basically, if this is a plot uh, of uh, voltage versus uh, H field, so magnetic field, uh, is that camera? Yeah. Uh, it'll give you a graph of something like that. So if the um, uh, magnet is on the, uh, s let's say, the, 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 the north pole, It'll give you positive voltages, and then as you go to the south pole, it'll start giving you negative voltages, okay? And uh, it's linear with magnitude, uh, the number of gauss in the, uh, in the magnetic field. So um, that's the way uh, a Hall effect would, would work. Um, there are other types of Hall effect sensors like this one. Uh, these are probably more common, actually, I believe. Um, I have an OH... Uh, OH3114, uh, okay? And it's a Hall effect sensor, which is denoted in this in this box with an X in it. That's the Hall effect sensor. It goes into a Schmidt trigger. So if the magnetic field is over a certain amount, it'll fire, and then it has to go down a certain amount before it unfires, right? Before, so ones and zeros. So give you a one if the magnetic field is high, give you a zero if the magnetic field is low, and this hysteresis built into the Schmidt trigger. And then it fires an open collector output. Okay, so it's an open collector. So there's just a, a, a three pin device. You put a, a VCC here, ground here, and then your output is an open open collector output, right? And these things operate from four and a half to 24 volts. So that's pretty cool. And it's open collector, which is a 25 milliamp output. So no more than 25 milliamps. Uh, it says here, uh, what can we, what can we use it for? Reverse battery protection. That's interesting. Um, activate with small commercially available permanent magnets. That's what we'll be doing here. Solid state reliability. Okay. Uh, that's it, it, a lot of times these are used as limit switches. So you could use an actual mechanical switch. Um, like my CNC uh, uh, router has mechanical switches for the limits. But they're prone to failure because they're 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 uh, mechanical. So solid state reliability, small size, and resistant to physical stress. There you go. All right. So anything else on this thing? So here's just another another diagram. There's actually a diode here into the voltage regulator. So VCC comes in, gets regulated, goes into the Hall effect sensor. There's some type of op amp. Uh, amplifier wrapped around the Hall effect sensor, and then it goes into a Schmidt trigger, and it goes out. So there you go. So like I said, this is an H. The part I'm going to be showing is a 3144. All right, so we have it on a breadboard here. Um, it's kind of small. Let me uh, let me zoom down a bit. Uh, so this little guy here, let me get a better pointer here. Uh, this little guy here is the Hall effect sensor. It just looks like a 3-lead three lead, three lead transistor, so... Uh, again, uh, VCC ground and, and collector output, and I have a pull-up resistor and LED. So let me show you. Let me show you the circuit that I've uh, that I've created here. Um, I have my three-legged part, uh, VCC uh, ground, and then the output, which is open collector. I'm going to have go to a pull-up resistor, uh, 10k. Plus V, and uh, the output is going to drive a LED. Plus V. Okay, this is 1K. All right. So this is remember this is open collector. Uh, it didn't draw that very well, but it's open collector, right? The emitter is going to ground, and then the collector comes around here to the. Uh, I didn't draw that very well. All right. Uh, so it's open collector. It's going to pull down to ground when it sees uh, when it sees 
a magnetic field, right? And so uh, normally this will be high, and then if it sees a magnetic field, this will pull low, and then current will flow through the LED, and it will turn on. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> I have, uh, what, 5.6 volts going into this thing, and uh, here, here's a magnet, and I've come over from the magnet. Look at that, it turns on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not as sensitive from the side, but it's uh, more sensitive from the front. And if you're going to use these things, there's there's something to be aware of. I was kind of sh kind of surprised the first time I used these things. I guess I shouldn't have been, but it kind of caught me off guard. Let me get a different uh, a different magnet out here. So. Um, so here's a magnet, and there's going to be some type of pole here and some type of pole here. So I don't know, north or south, I forget which is which. Um, and uh, you can see that it works just great. As I bring that pole in, about one centimeter away, it starts to turn on. Not starts to, it turns on. It's a Schmidt trigger, so it's either on or off. It's a hard on or off. There's no in-between on, the, on these devices, okay? Now, let me turn the magnet around, and I'm going to use the other end. And I can physically touch the, uh, I can touch the part, and it's not going on. So it's sensitive to the magnetic pole. Um, so you have to, if you're going to use this in a mechanical situation where you have uh, this in a, maybe a sliding piece that comes along, and you want it to have a limit switch, okay? If you accidentally uh, glue your magnet, so usually these magnets, right? These little magnets, you'll you'll drill a hole, and then you'll you put a blob of uh, RTV or, you know, a drop of uh, cyanoacrylate glue or something in there and, and, and glue these little magnets in place. And if you happen to guess wrong and glued them upside down, well, nothing's going to work. And guess what? If you have a magnet that's glued into a hole, you're not getting it out. You're not getting it out. <laughs> you're just not getting it out. So, uh, yeah, so be aware of that. Make sure you put your magnets in the right way. So if you're anything, anything comes out of this video, be aware of uh, Hall Effect sensors are sensitive to which way round the magnets go. And when you buy magnets, they're not marked. <laughs> There's no way for you to know. So you have to build a little circuit like this to test them. Um, and uh, so test, test them out before you before you glue them into the holes and you'll be fine. Otherwise, it's a fun little thing, uh, fun little thing to play with. It's, it's a great little thing to create a secret on-off switch. Um, so you can have a, a, a wooden box with no visible, visible ways of opening up or something unless you have, you have a magnet. Or if you have an automobile, you have to have a, a magnet, cer certain place on the dashboard before the car will operate or something. It's a good, it's a good security switch and uh, uh, yeah. And you could have like two of them, put the magnet right in the wrong place, like that will disable it and this will enable it, right? That kind of thing. So, yeah, kind of fun. And if you know, notice, this is not called a Hall Effect sensor. This is called a Hall Effect switch.